You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Howdy. Welcome to the show. My name is Paul. Yes, welcome indeed. And my name is Rob, and you're listening to episode number 794. Thank you guys for hanging with us today. We appreciate it very, very much. Definitely. And I'm really excited today to tell you about the Drone You Fly In. If you're not familiar with Drone You's second annual event happening at the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta Park in Albuquerque, New Mexico, August 3rd through 5th, you've got to check it out. Go to droneyouflyin.com right now. That's D R O N E U. F-L-Y-I-N dot com and check it out. Why? Because if you really want to hone in your skills, you want to practice skills that are going to be necessary for practical applications in the field, you're going to want to check it out because this is the only drone conference that actually has missioned-based flights. That's right. You're going to be flying for a large majority of this conference. There are 10 practical exercises for you to fly and for you to master. Even better, the entire conference is gamified. So how you perform in these exercises will be graded and you'll have the opportunity to win cash and drones. But you gotta hurry because there are not many spots available. Only 100 pilots can actually sign up and attend the drone you fly in. Last year's event sold out. So how long will you wait to sign up? Check it out, droneyouflyin.com. And be aware, that the early bird pricing ends May 15th. So you're going to want to get this done before then. Uh, I would say sign up now. I'm not sure there's going to be enough room May 15th. May not be. Anyway, check it out, guys. But welcome to today's show. We're really excited to be here talking with you. And you know what? We're really grateful that you listen. Thank you. No, really. Appreciate it. Thanks for hitting the download button. Thanks for listening to my voice. And uh, if you're like Josh Baker and the last thing that you listen to before falling asleep in the RV is my voice... That's awesome. Just don't tell me as I'm going to sleep in the RV in an adjacent room. Appreciate that, Josh. So <laughs> literally we're at the subject tracking class and he goes, hey, do you know what I listen to right before I go to bed? And I'm thinking it's going to be like white noise, you know, like a waterfall or like waves or, you know, something. Oh, Josh, and all Josh, of a sudden Josh. I hear my voice and I'm like, wow, awesome. Cool. Can you uh, can you put some headphones in? Because I don't want to listen to myself as I'm going to bed. So. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I'm speechless. Oh man, we have so much fun at these classes. It's just really hard to um, to even communicate how much fun is had, and and I love it. It's also something that was said in one of our testimonials for our recent um, mapping class. By the way, we do have one more mapping class coming up, right? It we is, do. It is in Denver, Colorado. Well, when you say one more, you're talking in the near future. In the near month. Yes. But after that, <laughs> we have month. more. So A little bit later in the year, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so May 13th through the 15th, I believe, in Denver. Actually, Boulder, Denver area. So North Denver, Boulder area. Yeah, so we're doing a mapping class. Very excited about that. Where can people go to find information on that? Oh, gosh. They can go to our Facebook page. That's probably the public Facebook page. That's probably going to be the best place to go find that. Or if you're interested, email us at support at thedroneu.com. I believe we've only got three spots left for that one. So, um, Oh, it's already... And we've already expanded the class size on that one. We expanded it once, so we won't be expanding it again because we want to make sure everybody gets the attention that they need. And then where are we headed after that? Are we going to San Diego or Austin? We haven't decided. Because we did the poll... And in the group. So this is another really powerful reason if you're not a drone you member to become a drone you member because you can actually vote on where we go uh, to hold classes. And the top three were Chicago, San Diego, and Austin. Mm. So when I get back from my honeymoon, we're either doing San Diego or Austin or both. Actually, you know what? Both sound great. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's plenty of time. Yeah, there no worries. lots of time. Anyway, all right, well, let's get into today's show. Again, if you have a question, go to askjourney.com. And if you haven't subscribed to the show or left us a review, please do. It just uh, makes us know how much you care, and we really appreciate it. Anyway. 
Hey guys, Nelson here from Ontario, Canada. Uh, I live in a pretty rural area and um, I am looking to add to my drone business by possibly marketing to farmers and agriculture clients uh, by doing uh, NDVI uh, crop scouting. There seems to be a bit of an appetite for it, but the question I always get from people is um, what happens with the data uh, that I'm collecting? And I know that you can use uh, cloud platforms to do the stitching and the processing like Drone Deploy or Slant Range has one. But I'm wondering if there is an option to do that processing um, on my own computer. I don't think it's as uh, intense as something like modeling or um, even the photogrammetry stuff that you guys talk about. Um, but I just don't know if there's a platform for something like that. It'd be great if there was because it would be something I could use as a marketing tool to say, we keep all your data secure and local and it's not sent off to the government or to Google or anything else. So I'm um, not sure if there's anything like that. Uh, if you make any re recommendations, that would be great. Thanks for all you do. Bye-bye. Thank you, Nelson, all the way from Canada. Love our Canadian listeners. Appreciate you guys being a part of the show. Um, by the way, if you have a question, go to astronew.com. Get that in. We'd love to hear from every single one of you. We try to get as many of these on as we possibly can. So, from him, For him being from Canada, I didn't hear many A's in there. Yeah, that's true. From Ontario. So, I don't know if it's different from Ontario. I want to I get know. into mapping, eh? <laughs> that's, you know, some people are going to think you're making fun. He's not making fun. I'm not making fun. I He's think it's around. cool. Anyway, yeah. all right. Well, so uh, there is something that you can stitch together, NDVI and IR photos. Um, and the way that you guys should know this, a lot of the apps use the same engines to process imagery. So typically, if an app is doing something cloud-based, it means the opportunity to create the same sort of deliverables on your computer is possible. Now, I do want to say one thing really quick, because recently we had a question concerning thermography mapping and what you need to do for thermography mapping. And again, after listening to Raptor Maps webinar, they provide a unique deliverable that I really liked and really kind of gave me reasoning to be like, okay, that's why to work with Raptor Maps. Like, it totally made sense with me. And I'm not condoning them. I haven't used their service yet. Uh, but practicality reasons or just kind of rationality, uh, it made sense to me. And what they do in thermography mapping is that they actually have you do a certain flight path. It's really specific. And the overlap is totally different. But in addition, they provide a deliverable not only for you, but a portal for your clients to view their deliverables. Hmm. And that's often a really problematic thing in mapping industry is getting the deliverable to a point where it is usable by the farmer. Now, there is also a product called Pix4D Ag. It is from the Pix4D suite of software. And the reason Pix4D Ag is so powerful is not only its ability to utilize multispectral imaging, um, but in addition, it can provide some really cool output data. What am I talking about? Well, Pix4D Ag can take your maps um, that you've given to your clients and actually connect to different farming management platforms and export those maps in various standardized formats. That way the farmer can take action on the maps. One of the webinars slash podcasts that I want to do is really getting into selling because I've heard a lot of people selling recently and I'm just like shaking my head, scratching my brain, hitting my head against the wall. I'm like, no, 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 no. There is a formula to this. It works for a very specific reason. And in part of that webinar, I wanted to talk about deliverables and why deliverables are so important. It's the first thing you should be talking about with any client is what is your deliverable? Why is this important to you? What problem are you trying to solve? Well, in NDVI mapping, the maps are only as good as their ability to be interpreted and used, which has been kind of an issue in agriculture and drones. I mean, this is something that uh, Precision Hawk does really well. Well, if I can only see the map and I can't take action on it, it only has so much value. Pretty but picture. It, exactly. But if I have something that then becomes actionable because it's showing me an interpretation, the, the farmer makes the interpretation, and now he can take action on that with his autonomous farming equipment. I mean, that is real power. Absolutely. So that is real power. Absolutely. You know? So I'm just waiting for Caterpillar to make a, uh, a little box behind the uh, operator's seat that has a drone that pops out. 
does this stuff autonomously all in one boom, 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 done kind of format. So seriously, I mean, the technology is there to do that. So, uh, yeah. And I mean, Pix4D is already saying, Hey, we'll, we'll take this to your tractor right now. So it's like, come on, Caterpillar, what are you guys doing? Yeah, totally. So, so. one of the things that he asks about is the, the storage of the data. Is this going to be the solution for that as well? I'm sure you're going to be limited somewhat. I mean, if he's talking about needing to require certain compliance rules, I'm not sure that any cloud-based system is going to be really uh, compliant. I can't speak for them. They're all going to be different. You'd have to do a lot of research on which which cloud-based programs have what type of protocols, what encryption mm. means for them. You're going to have to really dig down. You know, a lot of developers, even the developer recently that, we, that we've been working with and we need to take action on with uh, the interactive mapping, so many people say your, de- your network and data is encrypted. Okay, define that for me. I don't, you know. Sure. I'm not some old geriatric Mm. I know what these things mean. There are old geriatrics that know what these things mean. Just FYI. There are. Carry on. Very few of them, though. Uh, anyway, so I'm not going to get into that right now. Because, <laughs> you just did. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, the, <laughs> all right. Rabbit hole over. <laughs> Thanks for watching the show. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com and upload that question uh, and send it to us just as soon as you can. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Dronio.